Welcome to the first video of Mastering Endodontic Diagnosis course of Udemy. So this is going to be a preview, but you can follow along this entire playlist to learn everything about endodontic diagnosis in dentistry. When we talk about endodontic diagnosis, it just not depend on a single or two things. It is going to be a multiple domain approach where you have to see so many different things. Uh, for example, if you want to reach to an endodontic diagnosis, first thing that you would look into is patient's chief complaint. What does the patient say? And you have to write down in those exact words so that you know what kind of uh, triggers bring certain symptoms. If the patient is talking about cold, give me pain, then our treatment or our rest of the diagnosis plan would depend on that particular cold response. If the patient says a uh, hot coffee like this one gives me pain, then we have to uh, recreate that stimulus in the clinical control setting so that we know that exactly which tooth is the offending tooth. So chief complaints are amazing and you have to write it down in patient's word. The next is always subjective finding. Now, subjective finding versus Objective finding is something that tricks many people. So in this course, I'm going to explain further how do you differentiate between subjective findings and objective findings. So that's going to be a good learning for you. Uh, next, we will talk about previous history because so many things depend on it. Did, did the patient had a trauma in past? Did the patient uh, fell down or was it an orthodontic treatment? Was it a previous root canal treatment, a previous uh, restoration? So many different things which can actually help you bring to a correct diagnosis when you take a proper history. Next is diagnostic test. So we are going to go way, way in depth of each diagnostic test because somehow this in the past few years, national board exams of USA, Canada, as well as in India, these tests are being asked a lot because they want you to know everything about diagnosis and the tests perform a very important role during the diagnosis. So diagnostic test would be the next one. And the last one is going to be radiographs. Radiographs give you so much information about uh, the periodontium, the periapical area, restorations, if there is any caries, active caries, or if there is any kind of uh, thing that you should know before you jump into any endodontic treatment like pulp stones or canal anatomies and so many different things. So these are all things that we would consider when we are going to reach a diagnosis so this course is going to be way way in depth of endodontic diagnosis it's a it's a very good level anyone who has some basic knowledge in endodontics this course is going to take it to another level let's get started just to respect my references, I want to say that I'm a DDS student at Dalhousie University. I want to say that I'm no master's in endodontics. I do not have any kind of uh, authority in the discipline of endodontics. All this entire course and its content is coming from either uh, American Association of Endodontics uh, Literature, which is available for everybody for free. And I have used it exhaustively, but I cannot cite everywhere because it's not a research paper anyways. I also used uh, resources that I received from my Dalhousie University, where I study as a dentistry student i'm in third year right now and i was also a dentist in india so a lot of resources are coming from process to become an internationally trained dentist here i had joined dstc and prep doctors so a lot of uh, study material is coming from there also i'm using dental dex and kaplan and mosby's so i just put everything in front of me so that i can create a very well condensed version of endodontic diagnosis for you guys uh, i know it's not easy to get the correct resources but you can trust the information that's coming in this one i have condensed all that information so that it is short and accurate for dental boards and other exams that we all give so i just want to say thank you to my references and let's just jump into it so the first thing is going to be subjective finding now subjective findings are what the patient has reported objective findings are what the clinicians has performed to reach to the diagnosis so if we are talking about subjective findings then we need to know when did the symptoms start and these are all the probing questions that we are going to ask our patient and just think in this way that that's how you are actually reaching to a conclusion that from the history taking and from subjective findings that what exactly is happening in the patient's mouth before you even touch the tooth. So far, you have not seen the tooth. The patient is just sitting in front of you on the dental chair. You do not want to take the pro and uh, take a mouth mirror blunt and start tapping on the teeth, which teeth hurts. I know and patients sometimes want to jump to the thing that this thing hurts. Do not ask me anything else. But you have to ask these subject. Uh, you have to note the subjective findings and ask the history questions so that you know a thorough history before you even see the tooth some bias comes in as soon as we look at the patient and we're like, oh, I see a restoration amalgam. Oh, it must be leaky. That must be the culprit tooth. If 
after some uh, more diagnostic tests, you might find out that that tooth wasn't the offending tooth and it was the one next to it. That tooth was sitting like this forever. So that's why it's important for us as a clinician that first we find out what are the subjective and objective findings, uh, what is the history, what is the chief complaint, radiographs, only then we come to a conclusion or oh, diagnostic test and only then we come to a conclusion. So subjective findings is what the patient will tell us or uh, report us. So we have to ask question, when did the symptoms start? So the patient would say it started the last night, one week ago. It's been like this for 10 years. There is no pain or something like that. So we will ask when did the symptom start? Next you would say on a scale of one to 10, how much do you scale your pain? Is it 10? Like you cannot sleep, you cannot sit right now, you don't want me to say one word because sometimes dental pain or tooth pain can be that horrible. Uh, either, um, either that or they can say that um, it's not anything right now, but when I had my hot coffee or when I had my cold ice cream, that's when it hurt the most. So you would uh, ask them at that time, how much was pain from one to 10? Next is how long does the symptom stay? Is it short, like it just comes and goes, or is it lingering, like uh, as soon as you had that coffee, you were like holding your uh, hand on the cheek for like a few minutes. So that's when it's lingering, it's for longer time. If it's short, then you just had this thing and then it was gone. So then we know that is it irreversible pulpitis or reversible pulpitis. More on that later, uh, let's not get into right now. Then the next very important thing is to ask, can you point at the tooth that hurts? Now we have to remember this thing that sometimes there is something called a referred pain that patient can point to some other part of the mouth or oral cavity. Some patients just go somewhere else like in the ears or in the temple or some kind of area wherever they feel that the pain is actually referring to. So we have to first find out and note it for ourselves that the patient thinks the pain is somewhere on the back of this side or somewhere on the top of this side or here. And later on, with our diagnostic test, we will confirm that wherever the patient is pointing, is that really the correct place? Sometimes patient says that I do not know where it hurts. It may hurt completely on my left side or completely on my right side, all the teeth. So then it becomes more of a diagnostic test game that you are testing every tooth and finding out which one is the real offending tooth. Next question we will ask is, does the heat, cold or biting on something make the pain better or worse? Uh, this is very important because this uh, would give us a hint on uh, which kind of test should we do. So later on we'll discuss more about it, but cold test only when patient is complaining that during while eating ice cream or something very cold, that's when they feel this kind of pain. Uh, if the patient is saying that I had pain with cold and not on the heat, but you are still inducing a heat test, some literature say that might actually hurt the tooth more. So you might do more uh, damage than benefit the patient from doing a heat test when the complaint is only from cold test. So that's a very important question to ask. And uh, lastly, you are going to ask, was there any previous treatment done or did you see the dentist before or was there any other kind of uh, treatment done around that tooth or on that tooth which might uh, you find relevant. For example, orthodontic treatment, many people just ignore it and don't even account for it that I had some orthodontic treatment done when I was like uh, 16 years old and now they are like 30 year old. So they are like, that's irrelevant. But no, it's not because maybe that uh, severe orthodontic movement was uh, one of the factors which will cause some kind of endodontic problem. So that's why subjective findings ask these questions. So this is how you will do the subjective finding questionnaire. Next, we will jump on how do you do objective finding? So when it comes to objective findings, we have two ways of doing it. Now it's clinician who's doing it. Now it's from my eye as a dentist, I'm going to look through that from extra orally before even I jump on that tooth, extra orally, is there any objective finding that I should know about? What are some kind of extra oral findings? We can find swelling in case of uh, acute periapical abscess when patient might have a swelling on the uh, just below the eye here or on this side here. You can clearly see and patient will also say that this area is burning hot. So those kind of uh, findings would come in extra oral uh, findings. Then lymphadenopathy. Then if there is any lymph node enlargements and extra oral draining sinus. So you may see in severe worst cases when the patient is not ready to get any attention to that tooth for a very long time, then you might see case like this. 
And yes, you can trace the origin of this sign as patient might think it's just a pimple uh, which is bursting from the skin and they might have seen a dermatologist already for this and they come to you later. But this is what you account for as an extraoral finding. When it comes to intraoral finding, then you will see is there any previous treatment done like crown bridges or any root canal treatment, and in cases of periodontitis or any fractures of the tooth, any cracks, any trauma to the tooth and a traumatic occlusion of course if you see the uh, cusp are all grinded up or the patient has some kind of uh, traumatic occlusion already or some kind of habits which may lead to trauma from occlusion. So you have to see all those things and account for that will be your, as a clinician, you are making the objective findings. So once again, subjective finding is done in terms of patient. You are asking the patient the questions and patients are giving you that information. So patient is finding that objective finding is found by you as a clinician. You are looking at the patient and trying to find out uh, trying to write down all the findings that this is what I see, this is what I see extraorally, this is what I see intraorally. So that's a big difference between subjective finding and objective finding. Let's go to the next part. A chief complaint is something that patient is saying and you are literally transcribing it or jotting it down exactly how the patient is saying it. So that's why chief complaint is very important because it comes from patient and uh, it has that real information which you might get misguided from. You would be like, oh, this is also bad. This is also bad. This is also a problem. But the chief complaint is what is the first treatment that you need to perform for that certain patient. And when it comes to anodontic uh, part, then that is the cause of a discomfort, a pain to the patient and that has to be the first thing that we work on that's why chief complaint is very important when it comes to past history then uh, past medical and past dental history what drugs are the patient taking what are the other conditions they have these are also very important in contribution towards the diagnosis of the treatment so again you have to go through the solid questionnaire I usually use a form like this or like this when I'm trying to find out the patient's uh, medical history as well as past dental history. But when it comes to endodontic treatment, when it comes to endodontic consult, when you are trying to find out the diagnosis of that tooth, you do not want to go all over the places. You want to find out the most important medical history and most relevant dental history related to the offending tooth or around that offending tooth. So this is just the first part of the complete endodontic diagnosis video series on YouTube and the full course is also available on Udemy. So check out the full course using the link below or just watch this playlist to learn more about endodontic diagnosis. This is Sam from Teacherontist. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video with at least one of your friend who is in dentistry or interested in this topic. And click on the small icon on the screen to go to the next video in this series.